It started like any normal flight out of Kentucky, but less than a minute later, the cockpit filled with alarms. Something on the left side tore loose. The pilots tried everything to keep the plane steady, but the sky had already turned against them. That night changed the future of every MD-11 flying in the US. On November 8, 2025, the Federal Aviation Administration issued Emergency Airworthiness Directive 2025-2351, grounding all McDonnell Douglas MD-11 and MD-11F aircraft pending structural inspections. The directive stated the agency determined the unsafe condition is likely to exist or develop in other products of the same type design. The order came four days after UPS Flight 2976 crashed at Louisville Muhammad Ali International Airport. The MD-11F, registration number N259UP, was bound for Honolulu when its left engine detached during takeoff. Video footage captured the aircraft climbing briefly before rolling left and crashing into nearby buildings. 14 people died, including all three crew members and 11 on the ground. National Transportation Safety Board member Todd Inman revealed the cockpit voice recorder captured a continuous warning bell that sounded approximately 37 seconds after the crew called for takeoff thrust. For the next 25 seconds, the bell rang and the pilots tried to control the aircraft as it barely lifted off the runway, its left wing ablaze and missing an engine, and then plowed into the ground in a spectacular fireball, Inman stated. Boeing, which acquired McDonnell Douglas in 1997, recommended grounding the fleet before the FAA directive. Approximately 70 MD-11 aircraft operate in the United States. UPS operates 25 MD-11s in active service with 6 in storage. FedEx flies 38 with 34 in storage. MD-11 aircraft comprise approximately 9% of the UPS airline fleet and 4% of the FedEx fleet. Flight records indicate the crashed aircraft, built in 1991, underwent maintenance in San Antonio, Texas for more than a month until mid-October 2025. McDonnell Douglas launched the MD-11 program on December 30, 1986, following DC-10 development studies that began as early as 1976. The company received commitments for 52 firm orders and 40 options from 10 airlines and two leasing companies. Assembly of the first prototype began on March 9, 1988. Its maiden flight occurred on January 10, 1990. The MD-11 achieved Federal Aviation Administration certification on November 8, 1990. Finnair received the first delivery on December 7, 1990, and the aircraft entered service on December 20, 1990. Delta Airlines became the U.S. launch customer with its first MD-11 service on February 5, 1991. The aircraft featured a fuselage stretched by 11% to 200, 2 feet, compared to the DC-10. Its wingspan increased slightly and incorporated winglets. The maximum takeoff weight rose by 14% to 630,500 pounds. McDonnell Douglas fitted the MD-11 with a two-person glass cockpit featuring six CRT screens, eliminating the need for a flight engineer. The MD-11 failed to meet its promised specifications. McDonnell Douglas specified a range of 12,455 kilometers with standard payload. In reality, the aircraft could only achieve this range if payload dropped from 28,000 kg to 22,000 kg, a reduction exceeding 20%. With full payload, range dropped to just 12,025 km. Singapore Airlines cancelled its order for 20 MD-11 aircraft, choosing the rival Airbus A340-3 300 instead. American Airlines initially ordered 50 MD-11s, but operated only 19 for less than eight years. In 1995, American Airlines sold all 19 MD-11s to FedEx after determining the upgraded aircraft could not operate the Dallas-Hong Kong route as planned. The MD-11's horizontal tail measured 30% smaller than the DC-10's 920 square feet compared to 1,338 square feet. 
This design enabled better fuel efficiency, but inhibited stability during crosswind landings due to reduced pitch damping. The aircraft's wings featured one of the highest wing loadings of any airliner, resulting in landing speeds 10 to 20 knots faster than comparable aircraft. McDonnell Douglas launched the Performance Improvement Program in 1990, partnering with Pratt & Whitney, General Electric, and NASA's Langley Research Center. The program continued through 1995 and recovered some lost range. However, improvements proved insufficient for certain long-haul routes. Boeing announced in June 1998 that MD-11 production would cease due to lack of market demand. The last MD-11, an MD-11F for Lufthansa Cargo, was delivered on February 22, 2001. Total production reached 200 aircraft, 136 MD-11 passenger variants, 5 MD-11C combi versions, and 59 MD-11F freighters. The MD-11 found success in cargo operations after passenger airlines retired their fleets. FedEx operated 59 MD-11F aircraft before the grounding, making it the largest operator. The aircraft's cargo capacity and availability at low prices from retired passenger fleets made it attractive for freight operations. As of November 2025, approximately 66 operational MD-11 aircraft served global logistics networks before the grounding order. KLM operated the last scheduled passenger flight in October 2014, flying from Montreal to Amsterdam. Yeah, so Boeing is communicating privately that it expects its newest marquee jet, this long-haul 777X, to uh, start flying commercially in 2020. Boeing's biggest gamble just hit turbulence again, as the 777X, once billed as the future of long-haul flight, has now slipped years behind schedule, burning through billions and testing the patience of airlines worldwide. What was supposed to redefine aviation might instead become the costliest delay in Boeing's history. I think the problem for Boeing at the moment is it raises the specter of having to take yet another cash charger, a non-cash accounting charge that could be you know, between 2.5 to 4 billion. The 777X was supposed to revolutionize wide-body aviation when Boeing unveiled it in 2013. Airlines ordered 481 of these aircraft, banking on promises of 10% better fuel efficiency than the competition. That vision has collapsed into one of commercial aviation's most expensive failures. Boeing recorded a $3 billion pre-tax charge for the 777X program during its third quarter earnings report. The company added another $2 billion in losses tied to its 767 freighter and KC-46A tanker programs. Total charges across these three aircraft reached $5 billion in a single quarter. The 777X development began in 2013 with an expected entry into service by 2020. Boeing has missed every subsequent timeline. The aircraft was delayed to 2021, then 2023, then 2024, then 2025. Each postponement added hundreds of millions in costs and eroded customer confidence. Certification problems have plagued the program from multiple angles. The FAA discovered issues with the aircraft's thrust links during testing in 2024. Boeing had to redesign these critical components that connect the engine to the wing structure. The FAA also raised concerns about the plane's flight control systems and cockpit displays. Boeing CEO Kelly Ortberg addressed the mounting problems in October 2024. We're focused on completing the development program and delivering on our commitments, Ortberg stated. The company planned to deliver between 70 and 80 777X aircraft annually once production stabilized. The delay impacts major airlines worldwide. Emirates ordered 205 of the 777X-9 variant, making it the largest customer. Qatar Airways, Singapore Airlines, Lufthansa, and Cathay Pacific also placed substantial orders. These carriers planned fleet expansions around the 777X's promised capabilities. Boeing's production system faced additional scrutiny after quality issues emerged on existing 777 models. The FAA increased oversight of Boeing's manufacturing processes in 2024. Inspectors found problems with documentation, parts tracking, and assembly procedures at Boeing's Everett Washington facility where the 777X is built. The 777X program operates two variants. The 777X-9 seats between 384 and 426 passengers with a range of 7,285 nautical miles. The smaller 777X-8 carries 350 to 375 passengers across 8,730 nautical miles.
Both aircraft feature composite wings spanning 235 feet with folding wingtips to fit standard airport gates. Financial markets reacted negatively to Boeing's announcements. The company's stock declined following the October earnings report. Analysts at Bank of America downgraded Boeing's outlook, citing concerns about cash flow and delivery schedules. The $5 billion charge added to Boeing's already substantial debt load exceeding $50 billion. Boeing's struggles extend beyond the 777X. The company halted production of its 787 Dreamliner for months in 2021 due to manufacturing defects. The 737 MAX program cost Boeing over $20 billion after two fatal crashes led to a 20-month grounding. The KC-46 tanker program has accumulated $7 billion in losses since development began. The 777X competes directly with Airbus's Airbus 350-1000, which entered service in 2018. Airbus has delivered over 500 Airbus 350 aircraft across all variants. Airlines can choose the proven Airbus 350 or wait years for the delayed 777X. Several carriers have publicly questioned their 777X commitments. Reuters reported in October 2024 that Boeing expects FAA certification of the 777X in 2026. The company must complete numerous flight tests and resolve all regulatory concerns before receiving approval. The FAA implemented stricter oversight of Boeing following the 737 MAX crashes, extending certification timelines across all programs. Boeing employed approximately 170,000 workers globally. As of 2024, the company faced a machinist strike, affecting 33,000 workers in September and October 2024. The work stoppage halted production of the 737, 767, and 777 programs. Boeing and the union reached a tentative agreement in late October, though the strike's impact on the 777X timeline remained unclear. The wide-body aircraft market has contracted since the COVID-19 pandemic. Airlines reduced orders for large twin-aisle jets as international travel recovered slower than domestic routes. Boeing's order book for the 777X included 481 aircraft, but several carriers have deferred deliveries or reduced quantities. Qatar Airways CEO Akbar Al-Baker criticized Boeing's 777X handling. The airline ordered 60 aircraft in 2014, but received none despite the 2020 target date. Qatar Airways subsequently ordered additional Airbus 350s from Airbus. Boeing invested over $20 billion in 777X development through 2024. Industry analysts estimate the company needs 400 to 500 sales to break even. Boeing has 481 orders, but faces potential cancellations as delays mount. The 777X features General Electric GE9X engines producing 110,000 pounds of thrust each. The GE9X completed certification in 2020, but Boeing's airframe delays prevented service entry. Boeing's third quarter 2024 results showed a $6.2 billion net loss. The company burned through $1.3 billion in cash. Revenue declined to $17.8 billion from $18.1 billion year over year. Boeing announced plans to raise $25 billion through stock and debt offerings in October 2024. The FAA has not provided a specific certification date.